Though the shame from Viscount Capital, today I'm going to run through a very basic way to calculate the return ratio, which is a risk adjusted measurement of return. So it's very similar to the Sharp ratio. In fact, the only major difference is that it uses beta as a calculation of risk instead of standard deviation, which the Sharp ratio uses. So in essence, it's using systematic risk to gorge the possible risks that you're exposed to. So it's very easy to calculate, and you only really need three variables in order to calculate the trainer ratio. But the difficulty lies in uh, trying to find the price action of your overall portfolio. So if you already have the nav of your fund or the nav of the portfolio, then that will help an awful lot. But for the, those of you who don't, then here is a very approximate calculation. And what I've done here is I've taken five weeks of data. You should probably have more, like a year of data. And I've just uh, back-tested it here. And uh, here are about 15 securities in a portfolio. And here are their prices for five weeks. So in the second table, I've just calculated the daily returns of each stock over the five-week period. All I've done is I've calculated log returns, so ln of B3, which is 19th, minus the previous day's closing price. So notice that uh, I've done this for the whole table, and it's been quite easy just to drag and drop the uh, formula and populate the whole new table. So in the next table, the first row is the weightings of all the different stocks. The next cell, all I've done is I notice that I've frozen row 56, which is the weightings, and I've just times that. So I've times the weightings by the daily returns of the stocks. So this should be the daily contribution of ROC to the overall portfolio. So in order to get the portfolio daily returns, I've just summed all the portfolio contribution returns of the stocks for this particular day. So that has given me the daily return. And then I can just, again, drag that to the bottom. And that gives me the returns. Now, the one caveat here is that this is only very approximate. And it also assumes that you're rebalancing all your stocks to match these weights at the end of each day which is very unlikely, 1 in 10, perhaps more, probably actually do that. So what do I mean here? I mean that if we own two, if we have an allocation of 2.5% to Apollo, and Apollo happens to go to zero tomorrow, then we own XYZ thousand shares priced at zero dollars, so that will certainly distort the portfolio performance. So you'll have a different weight, say, on the second day and the third day, and there are certainly calculations to get around this problem, but for the time being, we're going to keep it simple. And like I said, this is an approximate evaluation, and you will still have a quite reliable return, or certainly should have, and it's important to perhaps just keep in mind that there will be some impact of the separate weightings for these different days. So going back to the trainer ratio, the average return of the portfolio is just equal to the average of the portfolio returns, which is here. And we can select them, and then we have the average daily return. And since there's 252 trading days in the year, we just times that by 252, and we can get the average return on a daily basis of the portfolio. So the average return on the risk-free rate, I have to know that that's 2.5% over the last decade on three-month T-bills. But you may want to use 15 BIPs or 10 BIPs as the average return, as that's quite relevant for the current day. So the beta of the portfolio is just equal to the covariance, which is covar in Excel, of the portfolio daily returns, comma, the S&P returns, divided by the variance, which is var, of the S&P, which is the benchmark. So we have 1.6, and the trainer ratio is just equal to the sum of average portfolio return minus the return of the risk free rate divided by 
beta. And there we have minus dot one five. So if it's negative, it means that you would have been better off putting your money into the return of a risk free rate. Better, better off putting your money into T-bills than it would be putting money into the portfolio. But then again, this is on five-week data, and you have to caveat that the weightings do change as you go along. And on top of that, as I said, you should probably have a longer date of historical prices. But in essence, that's the calculation, and you can play around with it. You can look to ways to get around this issue where you can calculate the weights, calculate a new table where you have the weights uh, adjusted on each day and then times the returns times by the actual weights rather than just having one row of weights, you have a whole table of weights. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I bid you good luck in modeling spreadsheets and calculating the trend ratio.